For fans of college basketball, the final four is down now to the final two. Tonight, Duke and Butler play for the championship. Sports reporter Sean Brown has been in Indianapolis all weekend covering the action and catching up with some key players. Here's Sean. The first matchup, Butler, Michigan State. The Bulldogs entered the game after a 25-game winning streak. But the Spartans' Corey Lucius made a statement right away with these two three-pointers within the first two minutes of the game. But Butler's Gordon Hayward answers with two of his own. They would go into the half tied at 28. Late in the second, with the Bulldogs up by three, Ronald Norad makes a steal, which leads to two freebies for Sean Van Zant, who misses the first and makes the second. Then with eight seconds left in the game, Ronald Norad gets this defensive rebound and is fouled. He heads to the line. Both shots are good, and the Bulldogs are headed to their first NCAA championship game in the school's history. Second matchup, West Virginia, Duke. It was Duke, Duke, and more Duke. The Mountaineers tried to make a comeback, but went into the half down by eight. Later in the half, the Mountaineers made a valiant effort, but when their star guard, Deshaun Butler, goes down with a knee injury, Duke continued to close the deal and are headed into the final against Butler. Hello and welcome to Lucas Oil Stadium here in Indianapolis for CBN's coverage of the 2010 Men's Final Four, which is now down to the final two, Butler and Duke. Tonight, those two teams will battle it out for the NCAA championship. But just a few days ago, four teams came here with one goal in mind, to win. And even though West Virginia and Michigan State are going home, some of the players from each of the teams realize that there are more important things than winning a championship. You know, God has blessed me to be here. And to be perfectly honest, I don't know where I've been without him. Senior guard Deshaun Butler had a tough game against the Blue Devils, but he says when he's on the court, there's really only one thing that matters. You play, I'm playing for an audience of one, you know. He's given me the talent and the people, and put the people around me to, for me to be successful. And he, obviously he's helped me in general, just with my lifestyle and everything. Junior guard Joe Mazzula has had some trials on and off the court, and he says his faith in God is what keeps him grounded. I mean, he's, you know, he got me here to this point, and I think uh, throughout some of the difficult times, I really kind of abandoned, uh, you know, asking him for help, and I think once I went back to him, I think that's what made, you know, all the difference. Freshman forward Dan Jennings has a tattoo to show he's not ashamed of his faith. I got it um, last year, and it means his blood, and it means, like, covered in the blood of Jesus, and he means everything to me. Uh, he's the number one person in my world. I mean, honestly, he means everything to me, and, um... You know, I just, I'm just thankful my parents brought me up that way and taught me all that at an early age. So now when I face adversity, I can deal with it that way. The Butler Bulldogs made history by advancing to their first championship game in the school's history. And the big reason for their success is sophomore guard Gordon Hayward, who led the team in scoring with 19 points. And he says that his faith is what helps him deal with the pressure of it all. If you, if you play for him and play for the, for the right reasons, then there's really nothing to be worried about. No pressure on us. So, um, and definitely no pressure on me. I just go out there and play the game that I love and um, just try to glorify his name. Ronald Norad made some big free throws during Saturday night's game. And he says that when people see him on the court, he hopes they see more than just a basketball player. I hope that they see Jesus in me. I really do. I hope that they see, you know, a guy who's having fun, who's loving life, and, you know, who's just extremely blessed to be in this opportunity. Uh, he's everything. Uh, you know, I think, you know, my life is, you know, trying to walk in his footsteps and what he's done. Um, you know, the way that I handle myself with the team, um, you know, I, I sacrificed myself for this team because that's what he did for everyone else. It's been six seasons since the Blue Devils have been in a Final Four. And after Saturday night's game, they prove they are back with a vengeance. And a big reason for their success is sophomore forward Miles Plumley and his younger brother Mason, who've come from a long line of ball players that have taught them to rely on their faith. I mean, that's been something that uh, my dad has instilled in us and um, honestly is, um, I don't know, just carried me to this point because it's not been easy and um, it's just a lot of times where things aren't going very well for you. So um, to get to this point, it takes, it takes a lot of faith. You can always turn to God just to put your faith in him. You don't have to put it in any person, you know. Sophomore guard Seth Curry is redshirting this season after transferring from a different school. And the expectations are high, mainly because of his older brother, 
Golden State Warrior Stephon Curry. And he says when he's on the court, he hopes to bring glory to God. It means, means a lot. So that's, that's why I play the game, just because God gave me this uh, ability to go out and play basketball. So I try to maximize that to the most and give him the glory for everything I do. I mean, basketball is only one part of my life, small part, but that's temporary. And I mean, a uh, relationship with Jesus Christ will last you forever. Those boys have got it right. You know, the <clears throat> Final Four is going to be over. Tonight, as a matter of fact, it'll all be over. Somebody will be the champion. Somebody will be the runner-up, and that's the end of it. They can maybe get a ring or get a plaque or get something, but that's it. Same thing with the Super Bowl. Get a ring, get some extra money, get a place maybe on the all-star team. What happens next? What happens next in your life? Ask yourself, what is next? What is next? And when it's all finished, what is next for everybody is the fact that you will leave this world and you're either going to be in the presence of God forever or else you will be apart for him, from him forever. And that's the choice you have to make. And so these young athletes <clears throat> have already realized the major choice of life. It's either going to be Jesus or it's going to be a life apart from him. Now, if you want to know for a certainty what's going to happen to you next, I want you to pray with me and let the Lord take over. If he's got control of your life and you've surrendered it to him, then good things are going to happen because he is in charge. I want you to bow your head right now. <clears throat> I want you to pray with me if you don't know him. Now let's let Jesus take over. Pray these words. Jesus, I love you, Lord. And I know you died for me. And right now, I surrender my life to you. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose again. And so, Jesus, at this moment, I declare that I am yours. And thank you that you are mine. Come now into my heart, Lord Jesus. Live your life in me. <clears throat> and I will live for you. And I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord, that you've heard my prayer. And thank you that you've come into my heart. Now, for those who prayed with me, that's such an important prayer. It's so important. And I want to do something for you. I want to help establish you in the Lord as you start out. So you say, well, what's next? What does it mean what I've just, just done? What does it mean? And what's going to happen next for me in the Lord? <clears throat> what about his second coming? What about the baptism of the Holy Spirit? What about all these things? Well, I have a little CD here that I did, 73 minutes of teaching, plus a booklet of scriptures, and it'll tell you the answers of what you're looking for, and I'll give it to you free. There's, there's no obligation whatsoever, but if you want to just call in and say, I prayed with Pat, I gave my heart to Jesus, and please send me that little book called A New Day, 1-800-759-0700. It's a toll-free call. Here's Terry. Terry. 